today's lesson here is we're looking at the parabola e4 y equals a bracket x times b all squared plus c. And what we're going to do is look at what happens when we change the values of a, b, and c. This little applet here made in GeoGebra allows us to change these parameters. And so initially, in our first part of the investigation, we play around with the values of a. So if we have a look here, I'll start by changing the values of a. I'll go from 1 to positive 2. So we see the rule now is that y equals 2x squared. There's no b or c value, so there's nothing to add in with the x in a bracket, and there's nothing to add on the end, because b and c are set to 0. And what we can see here is it's made the parabola narrower than the red dotted line, which is actually the original parabola y equals x squared. If I increase the value of a, then we'll see it gets narrower and narrower. In fact, the correct mathematical term we use is that the graph is dilated from the initial value. And in this case here, you can see that each point, I'm sort of plotting it at 1, 1, but it's going to stretch to the point here at 1, 2. Negative 2, 4, then it plots negative 2, 8, negative 3, 9, plots negative 3, 18. It's all been stretched by a factor of 2 or dilated by a factor of 2 from the x-axis. As we increase the value of a, the, the graph gets narrower and narrower. It's still a positive cup-shaped graph. If I actually start decreasing the value of a, then um, the, the parabola starts getting wider and wider. Um, then it goes this way and this way. And back to our original point. But if I go a value between 0 and 1 by 0.5, then we see the graph is even wider. If I make a zero, then we no longer have a parabola because it's now nothing times x squared. So it's not a, it's not a uh, parabola at all. So if I make the value of a between zero and one, the graph will be wider than the original graph of y equals x squared. Okay, if we make a a negative value, and here's the first one, make a negative one, we can see the graph now is an upside down parabola or a hat shape. And what's happened here is each of the y values, for instance, the original point was 2, 4, and now it becomes 2, negative 4. The y value is the negative of what was originally 3, 9, becomes 3, negative 9. And we say the graph has been reflected in the x axis. Uh, if I make a bigger negative number, it still makes it upside down and just makes it narrower, same as increasing the value of a when I was positive. If I make a negative half, you can see it's a wider than the original graph, but it's all still upside down. So in summary, a will affect the, if the graph is going to be u-shaped or cup-shaped, or the graph's going to be hat-shaped or upside-down parabola, and that depends if a is positive or negative. The size of A, if we make A, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, if we make A bigger than 1, then the graph will get narrower, and that's what you can see why it's looking. And that's why we got two different values of A and Phi. But if the value of A is between 0 and 1, positive or negative, we see the graph is wider than the original parabola. Okay, so at this point, you should do an investigation. Um, in section A. The next thing we did in the investigation was then see what happens when we change the value of C. So the first one in the investigation after makes C plus 3 and what we notice is the graph has shifted up 3 units. The turning point now is 0, 3. The point 1, 1 now becomes 1, negative 1, 4. Well, 1, 1 becomes 1, 4. 2, 4 becomes 2, 7. But every point's been raised up 3 units. If I make C a bigger value, so 6, we can see that the whole graph has been raised up 6 units. Each point's gone up 6 units. The turning point's gone from 0, 0 to 0, 6. The y-intercept and the turning point indicate that. And so as I increase C, the graph keeps going up. 
I go back to see what we wrote, back to our original cut of the plain label, no trills, white or deck square. If I start subtracting values from C, go back to the drill, C becomes X squared take 3, that's X squared take 3, you notice the A value is 1, there's no B value except it's 0, and the C value is the number at the end, so that's the form for changing values, and you can see from the crappler now, if we move the graph down by putting a minus C value, we turn the point to 0 in the victory. And if I drink too much from it, the value of C more negative, you see the graph just completely shifted down, so head out to negative 10, say. And so every point has come down 10 new units. On one, it's gone down to one unit of nine. Two fours, we're down to two units of six. We're turning points of zero to negative 10. So the correct mathematical explanation when you say the graph has been translated in the negative direction of the y-axis. And when you see it was positive, like this, we say the graph has been translated in the positive direction of the y-axis. Okay, so change in C shifts the graph up or down. If C is positive, the graph shifts up. If C is negative, the graph shifts down. Okay, I'll set C back to zero, go back to our original plain label, no trails, blah, blah, and we'll now see what happens when we change B. People would predict here, they expect B to move the graph sideways, and that's all right, which is true, but there's a slight little trick to this one. So we're now going to change the B value and make B positive 1. So the graph moves one unit to the right. The B value is positive 1, but in the brackets, it's X take 1. Because if you look at the general rule over here, I won't try it in this form, x take whatever the b value is. So what appears to us that looks like minus 1, it's actually minus a positive 1. And if I keep moving, make b a positive value, for instance, and make b 3, you can see the graph has been shifted 3 units across the right. So minus symmetry, obviously move so far across, and the axis of symmetry. The turning point has moved three points to the right. All the points have moved three units to the right. So this original point here was negative three nine. It's moved across three units now to, to the y intercept. It's actually zero nine. This is the map. And if I keep moving b out to the right, we'll see that the graph keeps shifting to the right. If I go back to b equals zero and move it to our, so our the original parabola. If I make b say negative 3, we can see the graph has moved 3 to the right. But if we look at the rule, it says x plus 3. The reason being, the original form is x take b. When I take a negative, it becomes a positive in the bracket. x take away negative 3, same as x plus 3. The form here is just the expanded form of that bracket. And you can see that the turning points come 3 units to the left. The y-intercept is uh, now there because this point here has gone three units across. And this point over the original has gone across three units to the left. And we continue moving to the left or right. So, in summary, at this point, we can say A will affect the shape of the graph. And we can determine its cup shape or hat shape. A will do that. B will shift the graph left or right. When we look at the rule, if it's negative in the rule, it actually shifts it to the right. If it's positive, the rule looks there's a positive sign there, it's actually shifting it to the left. If we then change the C value, so plus C, the number at the end inside after the squared, it will move it up, that's plus C. Plus C then if we minus B, it will shift the graph down. Note, once we start shifting the graph down, we'll get back to its intercepts there. But the next thing would be to what happens if we move all the parameters at once. So for instance, I want to look at the bracket y equals 2 bracket x plus 1. Well, x plus 0, let's make it minus 2 at the end. Use the rule. 
the A values are 2, the B values are 3, and the C values are minus 2. So here's the original graph. You can see it's become narrower, but still positive, so still cup shape. But the turning point, which originally was zero there, is actually now goes across 3 to the right and down 2. Our turning point's at coordinate nine, uh, 3 minus 2. The y-intercept, well, to work out the y-intercept, we need to put a 0 and put a rule there. And to work out what the current has become, minus 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. Take away 2 is 16. Or you can see the expanded form is the number at the end. Yeah, plus 16 is the y-intercept. We have some x-intercepts in this case. Just the graph shifted down to 2 and 1 4. They're still symmetrical about the turning point. But if we look at the rule, x take 3 minus 2, and have a look at the turning point, we can see that the x value at the turning point is whatever b is. Remember, this is b is that number, not the one sign in front of it, and the c value. So if I, let's make b minus 4, and c plus 3, See the graph has shifted across Excuse me, graph four to the left and up three units. The turning point now is minus four three. So because that there is x minus minus four, minus minus four minus plus four. So the turning point is minus four three. So when we look at a rule in this form, in the turning point form. The number out the front will tell us about the shape, whether it's upright or upside down. The number inside the graph will tell us how far graph shift, the graph shifts left or right. And the end number will tell us how far the graph shifts up or down. The turning point is always this value and this value. The trick is, when you look at the bracket, the B value is the opposite sign that's there. So if we had B as say plus two, whoops, didn't mean to do that. When B was say plus two, you can see it comes out as minus two in the bracket, but the turning point is two, three. So that's the number of the little trick about the inside the bracket or time around. The end number, we can see, we can see is six. It's plus six, the x the y value of the turning point is plus 6.